The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us here at Christ our Savior Lutheran Church in Holland, Michigan for the whole counsel of God where we read through all of God's Word. We're going through the whole New Testament this year. We're in the book of 1 Corinthians now. Today we'll have the 12th chapter on this 29th day of the month. Well, the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. So let's hear God's Word together and pray together. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Speak, Lord, for your servants here. Please show us now your ways, that we, may be, that we may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of our own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us life, O Lord, according to your word, and I will declare your greatness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Beginning in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, the first verse through verse 11, spiritual gifts. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities but it is the same God who empowers them in all, them all and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. So far the word of the Lord. God, who is one, unified and blessed the Corinthian congregation through his Spirit and gifts. Like the congregation at Corinth, we also suffer from divisions and party spirit, which undermine God's work among us. Yet the Lord still leads us to true confession through Jesus, our Savior, and the Spirit's work among us. We pray, mute our adulterous pride and curb our party spirit, O triune Lord. Combine our hearts and works that, you, that praise you, even as you unite our voice in the true confession of your name. In your name we pray. Amen. And now the balance of this 12th chapter, verses 12 through 31, one body with many members. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one whole body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he choose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker or indispensable and on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greatest honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, 
third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. So far the word of the Lord. Paul seeks to settle and unite the Corinthian congregation by emphasizing the order God established in creation and the priority of the gospel. The sin of arrogance plaguing the Corinthians still disrupts congregations today when roles of service are not clearly defined or valued. Yet also today Christ unites us in baptism and makes us his very body. Though wounded and afflicted, his body can never be destroyed, but carries out God's loving purposes. We pray. Grant me refuge, dear Jesus, in your holy wounds, from which you poured life and blessing for me and for all. Because you value all your people, teach me to love and serve them humbly according to my calling. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. From the Pray For Us calendar on this 29th day, we pray for all the mission work that's done throughout the Caribbean and all of Latin America. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. O merciful Father, you have wounded your own Son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body and mind, and those dying, and all those we now name to you in our hearts. as well as Art, Rick, Melissa, Clifford, Helen, Mary Ann, Art, Karen, Jane, George, Bonnie, Marilyn, and Chris. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will and sustain them into the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know that we need, Pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.